At this hour, the city of Wuhan was under curfew. However, two men dressed as merchants somehow managed to get out of the city, getting past a series of stop and search checks set up by the KMT army. After taking a phone call, the telephone operator rushed out of the lieutenant's office to report to Zhang Jian, commanding officer of the 19th Corps. It took just 28.3 seconds after the phone call for Zhang to receive the information. By Chongxi, Zhang's immediate supervisor ordered him to hurry to the Wuchang district of Wuhan as quickly as possible. There was something important they needed to talk about. Zhang Jian was on pins and needles after hearing this message. Zhang Jin was from Luoshan County, Henan Province. A graduate of the Imperial Japanese Army Academy, he was once the chief instructor on war tactics for students at Wampoa Military Academy. During the War of Resistance against Japanese aggression, he took part in the well-known Battle of Tai Arjuan and in the defense of Wuhan. Among the high-ranking nationalist officers, Zhang Jin was generally considered to be intelligent and good at logistics. He was also regarded as an honest and tolerant senior. When Bai Chungshi called for an urgent meeting with Zhang Jin, around 120,000 soldiers from the 4th Field Army of the PLA were on the north shore of the Yangtze River, just 300 kilometers away from Zhang Jin's headquarters by Hersheng Bridge. At any minute, they would cross the Yangtze River in three teams to enter Wuhan. The nationalist forces defending there were under the command of Bai Chungshi. <laughs> At that moment, Bai Chongxi was rushing back to Wuhan. Three days before, he was summoned to Guangzhou to discuss defense strategy with Li Zongren, the acting president of the nationalist government. Twenty days before, the 2nd and 3rd Field Army of the PLA broke through the defenses sent by the KMT troops along the Yangtze River. A million soldiers fought their way across the Yangtze. On April 23rd, Nanjing, the capital of the nationalist government, was liberated. The Liberation Army kept heading south. They liberated Hangzhou, then Nanchang, and several other cities. Thus, northern China, northeast China, northwest China, central China, and eastern China were all liberated and reunited. They formed one huge liberated area of over 2,600,000 square kilometers. Since the Liberation Army seemed unstoppable, Li Zongren, the acting president of the nationalist government, quickly summoned important military officers like Bai Chongxi to Guangzhou to discuss and come up with a solution. However, just after three days, when there were still many important issues to talk about, Bai Chongxi rushed back to Wuhan and asked for Zhang Jian specifically. But strangely, the commanding officers of the 7th and the 58th Army, who were defending Wuhan together with Zhang Jian, were not summoned. All these factors made Zhang Jian feel very uneasy. What was going on? What made Bai drop out of the meeting with Li and rush back? And why had Bai asked for him so urgently? Six hours later, Zhang Jian arrived at the Red Building, Bai Chongxi's temporary office in Wuchang District. On entering, he immediately became aware of one striking fact. The commanding officer of the 58th Army of the Nationalist Party, Lu Daoyuan, was there. Zhang Jian was once Lu's supervisor. Zhang had mentored and promoted him. They'd been through life and death situations together, so there was a very deep bond between them. Yet when Lu Daoyuan passed by Zhang Jian at this meeting, he didn't even greet him. Zhang Jian had just had a very deep and meaningful conversation with Lu the day before. What they talked about was very sensitive. If it was leaked, 
It could mean fatal disaster for Dan Jen. The two mysterious men suddenly walked into the garrison of the CPC's Jianghan military region, Central Plains Bureau. Wang Chi Guang, the then chief of the investigation section, still remembers what happened on that day. The former Pan Chiguang had a chance to ask. The visitors quickly revealed their identity. This immediately put Pan on his guard. This man, claiming to be Zhang Jian's son in law, told Pan Chiguang that they had traveled 200 kilometers day and night to report important information to the leaders of the Central Plains Bureau. He stressed that this information might help the Liberation Army get into Wuhan faster. But Pan Chiguang had doubts about what he was telling them. Wai Chongxi hurried to the meeting room. But unusually, there was no casual talk with Zhang Jian. It felt very strange. What Bai Chongxi had just thrown in front of Zhang Jian was a confidential telegraph from Gu Zhutong, the Secretary of Defense. It read, According to our secret source, Zhang Jian has been colluding with the communist bandits and is planning on betraying us. Please detain all his division-level commanders and officers of higher rank and send them to Guangzhou and bring them to justice. Disband his troops on the spot. No more words were needed. Zhang Jian was in a cold sweat. He knew his life was in Bai Chongxi's hands with this telegraph alone. Back now in the garrison of the CPC's Jianghan military region. Whilst Pan Chiguang was still feeling suspicious about the visitor's identity, this man who called himself Zhang Jian's son-in-law came out with even more astonishing news. <laughs> The Jianghan military region was based around Xiantao City, Hubei. It was still several hundred kilometers away from the headquarters of the CPC Central Plains Bureau. Pan's job was to investigate the enemy's situation in Wuhan. He had never before had any direct contact with Zhang Jian. <laughs> Meanwhile, Pan Chiguang's staff reported to him some very important information about Zhang Jian. It turned out there had always been an undercover CPC agent in Zhang Jian's troops, and Zhang Jian knew all this. Several days before, Zhang Jian had even sent a message to the leaders of the Central Plains Bureau through a secret communication line, saying that Bai Chongxi was leaving Wuhan and that he planned to blow up factories before he left. So, why didn't Zhang Jian send a further message through this secret communication line? Instead, he sent someone specifically to deliver the message to the Central Plains Bureau. Was that man really Zhang Jian's son-in-law? Could this message saying Zhang Jian would start an uprising actually be true? Pan Chiguang tried to calm them down and play for time. Meanwhile, that very same night, he reported this to the leaders of the Central Plains Bureau. Then, Bai Chongxi suddenly got another tip-off, saying that two regiments of the Nationalists defending the south shore of the Yangtze River were planning a revolt with the CPC, and their regiment commanders were taking the lead. Upon hearing this, Bai Chongxi became furious for the sole reason that previously, Wu Huawen, the commander-in-chief of the Jinan West Garrison, had started an uprising on the battlefield in Jinan in 1947. 
In 1948, Zheng Zexian, commander of the 60th Army of the Nationalist Party, started an uprising on the battlefield in Changchun. Fu Zuo-e, stationed in Beijing, led the bandit suppression operations in eastern China. In January 1949, he switched sides and joined the CBC. Bai Chongqi realized that these changes of allegiance by leading KMT officers would deeply damage the morale of their troops. They also hastened the liberation of the country by the CBC. All of a sudden, there was the sound of artillery. The lights went on and off. Bai Chongqi didn't need any report to know that the advanced troops of the PLA weren't far away from Wuhan city. With enemies arriving and constant problems within the Nationalist Party, Bai Chongxi could no longer hold back his feelings. He flew into a rage. Since he was tipped off specifically by name, Zhang Zhen was on pins and needles. But he knew that he also had an ace up his sleeve. The Hersheng Bridge, where Zhang Zhen's troops were stationed, was at the boundary of Wuhan and Xianning City. It was the last shield to protect Wuhan besides the defences along the Yangtze. There were two railway lines running north-south, the guangzhou Wuchang and the beiping Hankou Railway. Zhang Zhen knew that the Hersheng Bridge was the key to making sure Bai Chongxi could leave Wuhan safely. If anything happened to Zhang's troops, Bai Chongxi's retreat route would be cut off. Therefore, Bai Chongxi had cause to fear Zhang Zhen. Bai In the garrison of the Jianghan military region, Huang Jiguang had received no orders from the leaders of the Central Plains Bureau. An hour earlier, he found out from Wuhan undercover agents that at the end of 1948, the CPC had sent people to contact Zhang Zhen many times and tried to persuade him to revolt. During that time, Zhang Zhen promised the CPC that he would start an uprising sooner or later. But he was also actively working with Bai Chongxi's Guangxi clique, trying to force Chiang Kai-shek to step down so that he and others could share power. Without any corroboration from the supervisor, there was no way that Peng Chiguan could tell if all of this was true, so he could only deal with the visitors himself. In the meeting room, Bai Chongxi finally broke the ice. He said that he trusted Zhang, but Gu Zhutong, the one who had sent the telegraph, had given the order to arrest Zhang, so there was nothing he could do. Since Bai Chongxi showed him the telegraph instead of having him arrested immediately, Zhang Jian knew that Bai Chongxi still partly feared him. Zhang Zhen's force, his military officers, are mostly from the Henan and Chongqing system. 因此呢，就不属于这个白宗喜、这个广西系统。但是白宗喜对他又很客气，因为当时湖南省政府主席是程前，白宗喜觉得他的后路是程前管的。这个张轸在二十多年前就是这个程前的嫡系，因此呢，
Zhang Jian had served the Nationalist Party for over 20 years, and he was very familiar with the distrust and suspicion within the party. Over the years, he'd seen enough of the clique strife within the party, the dog-eat-dog -dog mentality, and the misery and suffering ordinary people had experienced. That was why, 72 hours previously, he'd made a bold decision. Zhang Jin had decided to start an uprising. He tried to convince Lu Dayuan to join him, but unexpectedly, Lu reported him. Meanwhile, the secret communication line he used to contact the CPC had been discovered and cut off, so he couldn't contact them anymore. Under these extreme circumstances, Zhang Jin sent his son-in-law, Zhang Yinren, to the Jianghan military region to report the uprising. So Zhang Jin, of course, saw this situation. One of them felt that the government had gone away. The other one, with Bai Tongxi, had a conflict on the military. He is not a military person. He is a member of the military. In the support of the military and the support of the military, it naturally caused the fight against the government. He was a leader of the people's government. This is such a concept. In the garrison of the Jianghan military region, five hours after sending the telegram, Pang Chiguang got a reply from the Central Plain Bureau's leaders. In the reply, it confirmed Zhang Yinren's identity as Zhang Jian's son-in-law. In addition, it gave Pang Chiguang a vital mission. Upon receiving this positive reply about Zhang Jian's revolt, Zhang Yinren, Zhang Jian's son-in-law, was finally relieved. He sent his colleague back with this news, and he stayed on at the Central Plains Bureau to discuss the revolt in detail with Wang Jiguang. After they reached agreement, Zhang Yinren rushed back to Wuhan the same night. Back then, he didn't know Zhang Jian, his father-in-law, was dealing with Bai Chongxi, and whether he would live to tell the tale was still uncertain. Bai Chongxi burned the telegraph in front of Zhang Jian to calm him down. But he asked Zhang Jian to invite division commanders and officers of a higher rank from the 19th Corps to come the next morning and prove Zhang's loyalty. Zhang Jian saw through this trick right away. Bai wanted to put them under house arrest. Zhang Jin started thinking about an escape plan. Zhang Yinren traveled overnight to see Zhang Jian. He wanted to tell Zhang Jian this news as soon as possible. Zhang Jian didn't know Zhang Yinren's situation. He had to leave Bai's mansion right away, since it was now a matter of life and death. Zhang Jin made up an excuse, saying there was no direct telephone line to his garrison in Hersheng Bridge here in Bai Chongxi's headquarters, and so he had to leave for the Anko headquarters at once to use their direct phone line. That place was over 10 kilometers away from Bai Chongxi's mansion. Against all expectation, Bai Chongxi allowed it. Why he went to Hongmenyan, he knew, he knew, 
说这非常像鸿门宴，去了之后啊，明媒可能会杀他，就给副手交代了。如果我回不来的话，你就带部队起义，就他已经布置好了。如果说这个时候白崇禧把张轸杀了的话，他意义确实不大。这一点白崇禧会考虑的。Zhang Zhen immediately left Bai Chongxi's headquarters and headed back to his garrison. At that moment, he was absolutely determined to revolt. He himself, this is a hundred years of fighting, a hundred years of soldiers. He saw that the Kuomintang Party was definitely going to fight. So at this time, you are going to fight for them, you are going to fight for them. It has no meaning. Also, from the Kuomintang Party, many leaders, like the other people, have already had a conversation. He also wanted to advance forward. So, in 1949, the Kuomintang Party was elected to the Kuomintang Party. He was already elected to the Kuomintang Party. In the time of the Kuomintang Party, he was ready to fight. Zhang Zhen bypassed multiple checkpoints before finally arriving at his headquarters. Zhang Yinren had come back from Xiantao and had been waiting for him for a long time. He brought back the message Zhang Zhen needed to hear most at that moment. In the early morning of May the 15th, 1949, Zhang Zhen started an uprising in Jinkou town, Wuchang. Five of his seven divisions were with him. In total, over 25,000 men. Three hours later, the advanced troops of the 4th Field Army of the PLA started crossing the Yangtze River that same morning. They quickly broke through the Nationalist Party's defences along the river. They successfully got to Wuhan, south of the Yangtze, from the Lanxi area and some other places nearby. Two days later, on May the 17th, Wuzhang, Hankou and Hanyang, all three districts of Wuhan, were liberated. Zhang Zhen's government has been destroyed by the Wuhan Republic. Because Bai Tongxi has destroyed it, and the Bandu has been destroyed by the Bandu. The 19th Army has been destroyed by the Bandu. The Bandu has been destroyed by the Bandu. 江汉平区的部队的损失。说武汉的解放呢，对于当时这个解放全中国也有着重大的影响。解放了之后呢，那么人民解放军向长江以南继续进军，那有了一个呃很好的一个战略形势。这个武汉的解放呢，也证明了这国民党对大城市连守的信心都没有。说此后这个解放大陆的任何大城市，其实都没有经过激烈战斗。After so much chaos caused by the war, the people of Wuhan finally embraced their liberation. Today, the Jianghan Guan Building, Wuhan's landmark, still stands as witness to the stupendous changes the city has been experiencing. 66 years ago, people from all walks of life held a grand celebration here to mark the liberation of Wuhan.